Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to my shop. You know, if you tuned in to see a thousand pound beast with 500 teeth, you're not going to be disappointed, but you're not going to get one with a pulse. What you are going to get is a close-up look at this beast over my shoulder right here. This thing will chew your arm off without even a blink of an eye. So if you're not a metal shop guy, hold on for a second. You might find this interesting. If you are a metal shop guy, don't be throwing things at the monitor just yet. Because I got something to show you that uh, I mentioned in conversation a couple days back and uh, got a lot of raised eyebrows and we're going to see if it works. So stick around for that. Let's take a closer look at this machine and what it is and uh, why it's called what it's called. This is a 16 inch vertical metal cutting do all bandsaw. And do all is the company, not just their reputation. I guess one of each actually. It's called 16 inch because it's the maximum width of anything you could stick through here 16 inches wide it doesn't really matter how wide it is over there and 16 inches is also the diameter of the drive wheels and followers bottom has got the motor top is just a follower this is the type of saw that you'll find in a lot of wood shops a lot of metal shops unfortunately a lot of butcher shops uh, which should speak volumes as to the potential danger involved the blade on this machine is 125 inches long and has four teeth per inch, meaning 500 teeth going across that opening at any given time. I'm going to run the camera inside for a second, go on the whiteboard, and just illustrate exactly what's happening right here. Hey guys, let's take a look at the potential danger of a machine like that. 125 inch long blade on the machine that we're going to do the demonstration on. 16 inch diameter wheels, that means 50 inches around each wheel. 500 RPMs results in 25,000 inches of blade going across that cut line right there. 25,000 inches of blade every minute times four teeth. 100,000 teeth past this line right there every minute. 100,000 teeth. That's hard to imagine, but that's true. Break that down into seconds. That is 1,674 teeth right at the table every second. Human reaction time, if you're on the stick, two-tenths of a second when you go, Oop, something went wrong. Well, in that two-tenths of a second, that machine just buried 335 teeth into your finger if your finger's still there. So running it, be careful, use a push block. Let's go out for the demo. All right, to give you the somewhat of an idea, the capabilities of a machine like this. Yeah, I know you machinist guys are saying boring, but wait a minute, you got to wait for it. This is a 2x4, standard construction 2x4. You find at any construction site anywhere. Let's see how fast we can go through this. <laughs> Okay, enough said. Slices a two by four like it's a piece of bread. Needless to say, it would go through your arm just as fast. Same speed, same blade. Let's put a piece of metal across there, see what happens. Now for the metal, I am going to be putting a little bit of lubrication on this so the metal doesn't clog up in the teeth. That's what you're gonna see. This is a block of two inch, two inch aluminum. Much harder than a two by four.
Needless to say, any machine that can walk through a piece of material like that can walk through your hand or your arm quite easily. Now, the good rule of thumb when selecting a blade, and this isn't about selection or safety or anything else, it's just there's a point here. You always want to have at least two teeth buried in your material at all times, or you have a problem, which I'm about to demonstrate. And then I'm going to show you the solution that all you machinist guys have been waiting for. So hang in there. Check this out. Let's make the dust go away. Next piece of material to get cut is an extremely thin piece of aluminum flashing. This used to be one of those roll it up into a circle dryer vents which makes for great shim stock at the home center. If you can't find it, go over and get a piece of that. Anyway, I'm going to violate my own rule of thumb by putting a piece of material across this that fits in between the teeth. I do not want to strip the teeth off, and this was, if this was a piece of steel, that's exactly what could happen. But what I expect from this cut, I expect this blade to bend this, twist this, just make an absolutely horrible cut out of that, and that is my expectation. So let's see what we got. Okay, not disappointed. That edge is pretty nasty. A lot of burrs on the back side. And you saw it jumping around. Now, many years ago, I had a chance to vinyl side a house. And I was cutting the vinyl siding with a circular saw. And somebody told me, do yourself a favor. Run the blade backwards. Still running forward, but the teeth are facing backwards. I'm going to try that with this bandsaw blade. We're going to put this blade on backwards and try that thin cut again. And see if that same philosophy fits here. This will be interesting. I've actually never done it. And don't know what to expect, but I know it worked on the vinyl with a circular saw, so let's try it. Uh, now, this is a rookie mistake that a lot of people make when they're first starting out in this trade. They don't pay attention to the blade direction. This blade is now technically put on backwards. It's still facing forwards, but the teeth are now facing up. So against all convention, you would think this blade's not going to cut. Well, I bet it cuts through that aluminum like it's nothing just by slapping the material out of the way. Don't try this at home, but I got to know, so let's do it. Same speed, same blade, same thin material, and I'll see if I can find some other material to get in trouble with. There we go. <laughs> Little closer look. Teeth in the standard profile. These divots are facing down, so the impact has torn up the edge. This is with the blade reversed. Considerably less distortion. Considerably less distortion. Backside burr. Side burr. Inverted is the way to go for thin aluminum, that's for sure. This is about 080 plexiglass, about two millimeters. <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> you would bet that would never work, but it does. All right, so I think I made my point. Super soft materials, blade running in reverse, believe it or not, will still cut. Now, just because I know I'm going to get blown up with comments when cutting thin material and ignore the fact that the teeth are in the wrong direction at this moment, when you cut something extremely thin, it is okay to pre-cut some material with a single blade kerf and use that to support very thin material that passes through the blade.